welcome to Live With Greg or Live With Greg, depending on the semantics. <laughs> Another episode of Live with Greg with <laughs> Liam Mills. Thank you for having me, Greg. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Been trying to get this off the ground for a while. We have. Life is busy. That yeah, is. Craziness. Especially when you're a single dad. <laughs> Nonsense. Busy. Yeah, unfathomably sometimes. And that was kind of the linchpin of interest here of uh, being a father mm -hmm. and a single father. It was. I'm definitely trying to be an advocate for single parents. I know personally, maybe one or two. It's like, even with like support groups and stuff, they're out there, it's like, I feel very alone and isolated, for sure. And it's just, not people know about it, especially dads. Every, every time I talk to like a single parent or a parent that's maybe going through it, it's like, oh yeah, mom has half custody or full custody or, it's like, well, what happened to you? You know, it's like, I don't know, it just like, seem to be the norm with my exact story. Alright, so you up for giving like the cliff notes of your story? In what sense? So what brought you to the point of being a single father? Wow. Going way back. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, um, found out me and a high school girlfriend were pregnant at 19. I was up living in Grass Valley. Didn't know what the fuck. Didn't know what I was doing. You can fuck you so okay. fuck. Uh, didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Um, <laughs> while you were fucking. While we were fucking. <laughs> didn't know where I was, what I was doing. Just out of high school. Terrified. We were like, all right, I guess we're doing this. 20 years old hit. Had a kid. Beautiful son. He's amazing now. Um, and we were, we, we were cool. Everything was fine. All good living in Grass Valley. I was going nowhere though, wasn't making money, wanted to go back to school, there's just nothing up there that was for me. Up in the woods, did, isolated for sure, talking about isolation. So I moved back down to Marin, here. Um, I was like 22 at the time. Back to school, got a cool job with our cousin Taryn. Um, started hearing things, because she was, her and my son were still up in Grass Valley. I was sending her money and stuff. Um, he would come down on the weekends, every weekend. I was very consistent with that, because I wanted to be there. Um, started finding out from friends and different family members that she was doing drugs. <clears throat> Hard ones. Hey, I saw your kid with Candace uh, at a gas station, 1 a.m., looking like shit, whatever else. I'm like, okay, that's freaky. Confronted her, denied it. <clears throat> the, the stories kept coming six months, eight months later. I took him for the weekend and clear signs. I mean, I was like, Ye she is not going to be around my kid. He was bad. Hanging out with the wrong people, all these things. So I had him for the weekend, um, went to court on Monday, just didn't give him back, she never called. Went to court, found out all the paperwork, she was searched papers, we had a court date, what, a month, three weeks later, she didn't even show up. The judge says, okay, there you go. E easiest thing he's ever done the day, it took 35 seconds. <clears throat> Once my name was called, he was like, okay, other party, nothing, see ya. Wow. So I was like, okay, here we go. Wow. And he was, He's 12 now. It's been about nine years. Full, full custody of my son. And he just turned 12. He just turned 12, June 21st. <laughs> um, and we haven't looked back. I think one or two times she reached out saying, hey, I'm doing my best. Um, I'm clean and sober. But never, never fully committed. It was like one or two days on a Christmas or something uh, that she showed up and wanted to hang out with us. And she looked like shit. Um, so I've had him ever since, man. I mean, full, full, 24-7, everything you can imagine. I get a break about once a month, a night a month to myself in the last nine years. And family comes in to support that to happen? Yeah. Like, from what I hear. Yeah. Yeah, our cousin Kendra. My mom has a couple times. A couple summers, he'll go for a couple days. Taryn and Robin. Taryn and Robin coming in huge. Uh, Robin especially. Um... But lately he's older, you know, like right now he's in Montana right? for two and a half weeks. First time that you and him have been apart since he, you became full-time father. For this long. Yeah. Yeah, almost three weeks he'll be gone. Wow. Yeah. So it's a trip. Every day I'm just like learning something and you know how he is. He's on the spectrum. Well, and so before, 
let's go there. So part yeah. of, like, again, um, your aunt and I split up years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've just been hearing things. And I'd hear, like, he's a wild kid, so much energy, can't tell him anything. He's bouncing off walls. It's hard to be around. And then I'd hear, oh, he is ADHD. Like, that's a given. And I think when you and I hung out that time around Christmas mm -hmm. and you were considering it might be appropriate for psychological drugs, that's one of my trigger points. I was like, ah, don't do it. He's a kid. And now, just recently, you shared, like, he is diagnosed spectrum. He is. He is, and I think, I don't remember when exactly when we spoke, but I do remember the conversation about no, no, no medications. <clears throat> and I took it to heart, and then Liz also said the same thing. And so for the past, I think he was diagnosed almost three years ago. A spectrum? With ADHD. Okay. And, and we, clear signs, like, fine. I just want to get, like, on the books to help him get resources for schools, right. and doors opened. Right. So that was cool. It was shitty to hear, I'm like, oh, my kid's on fucking, you know, whatever. He's got this psychological uh, challenge, if you will. Uh, and then, yeah, about a year and a half, two years ago, it was on the spectrum and not full autism, but it, it is, there, there are some signs you could never really tell, except for like the hyperactivity stuff, but it's on the spectrum, for sure. One of the other things where you just mentioned how the emotional, like, detach and it's you yeah. know like he's getting on the plane he's been holding on to you yeah. like I can't do this yeah. and he's like oh I got this and not he's, even a goodbye like, not even like I was never there right and and you're left there go <laughs> what the heck don't leave me yet yeah so uh, go back a little bit back and forth the past couple years on I have to get medication we've tried everything under the sun I mean we cut out red dyes that was a huge one um, not that we were eating it a lot of it, but you know, hey, sure, get a red Gatorade. It's 100 degrees outside. Sure, I never thought anything of it, but it was making him so much worse. And his doctor was like, red dyes, red dyes, red dyes, cut them wow. out. That's Everything red dye 40 or something else. Number three, it's like two different kinds of red dye. So that was huge. So 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 his diet was number one. Exercise, sleep were like the three main natural remedies, if you will, to help with ADHD hyperactivity so we did all that and it, was just, it just would not it would not stop I mean it's just like there was different things that for, for the day where I like I couldn't handle it <clears throat> but never did medication I'm still I almost did it a few times I'm like fuck this you need to chill out one of us is gonna get drugs seriously <laughs> so I'm a huge advocate of, of natural remedies and, and I, I don't take anything I really take Tylenol so I was super super against it and then I kept fighting it and I still haven't made a definitive answer if I if I would or not because he because professional doc, doctors and psychiatrists are like it'll help. Sure, you're taking a, a a benzo. Sure, it's speed pills, right? But it will help him stay focused on what he needs to succeed or to focus to succeed. You know what I mean? Right, right. So, <clears throat> but still no, I'm not down. Well, there's a uh, episode I live with Greg. I did a few episodes ago with a woman who's a counselor and she has ADHD mm -hmm. and her son has ADHD and going into the episode recording I didn't know her I just met her through next door I was like I was honest with her I was like that, this ADHD thing I think it's an excuse for parents who don't want to deal with kids and then at the end of it I was like you've educated me yeah. I realize now that there is something to this yeah and like her son's a soccer coach mm. and he loves it and I know from my brother that soccer football for the rest of the world um, takes an immense amount of energy you're constantly running and her, it just her son it just perfect yeah um, so sports have been a, a difficult thing to try to get him to there I mean he's he's interested in them uh, but karate actually surprisingly I mean you're not constantly jumping and kicking and running like soccer or football <laughs> but there's like these movements with because boy I, boys are supposed to meant to be punching and kicking and fighting and wrestling and dirty and rolling and flipping and I get that 
and, and with karate, you're, you're kind of just doing that all at once and getting it all out for 45 minutes or whatever. So we did that for a while. It's expensive. Single parent, <laughs> broke ass. <laughs> but he loved it, and that helps, but constant exercise. I mean, swimming has been absolutely, he's a fish. I can't get him out of the pool. Four or five hours of constant swimming. Awesome. It's the best $10 I've ever spent at a pool. <laughs> five o'clock, we clear house. Like, we shut that bitch down every time we go. when you get home. Ooh, it's this in the car, five minutes to get home. I instantly sleeping in the car. So it's just, you know, every day is a challenge. Every day is different. Every day is, you never know what to expect, which can be fun and exciting, keeps me on my toes. But having it structured every single day, like I mentioned the other day, that my life has to be structured for myself to benefit him as well. Because if it's not, it's derailed and it's hard to reel it back in. Crazy. Do you have a spiritual sense that is a part of your life? No. So no spirituality. No, I'm. I'm. I. I. I sometimes read books and listen to podcasts, but I don't sit there and practice it. No, no. But I mean, it's like just sort of a core belief. Like there is something more that is not seen by the physical eyes. Yes, I believe so. I do believe that. I couldn't tell you anything more than that, other than that, I believe it. Spirituality, for sure. Yeah. So, <coughs> is part of that belief eternal, infinity? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, what I'm wondering is to have, and I'm not... I am not trying to talk you out of having boundaries in this regime because I get the importance of it. Mm -hmm. How does one keep an open-ended sense of life and potential mm -hmm. while also holding on to boundaries and discipline? That is the mission that I am on because it is draining me and killing me and exhausting me and it's not fun. It's not. I don't even live. I'm just surviving. You're very well gripped. Thank you. Welcome. That is the, hold on. That's the fourth <laughs> compliment today on my beard. <laughs> the reason I mention it as Four. a person who, you know, it's a fucking. It's immaculate. No, it's pain oh. in the ass. It takes time. <laughs> it does. Like, I recognize... Game, recognize game. Right, but I'm also <laughs> recognizing you're doing better than just surviving. You're definitely part of your discipline is making sure you're at a uh, upper level. But my standards... Yeah, sure. Other people, I'm not just surviving, but to my standards, because I hold myself at such a high fucking standard, I am just surviving. I am doing the bare minimum what I think I have to give, or could do, or need to do. I'm doing the bare ass minimum. I'm paying rent. I'm cooking food. I'm, I'm dressing myself. I'm, I'm cleaning my... Like, that's it. I'm just like hygiene, food, sleep, exercise. And making sure this boy's got everything he needs. Right. Well, that's what a dad's supposed to do. Right. But You're second. I you get agreed it. to raise a kid. I know. But, like, because of the standard thing, I just feel like I could do so much more. You listen to David Goggins? Absolutely. Every day. <laughs> Who's going to carry the boats, motherfucker? Who's going to carry the boats? So, I believe that you're carrying the boat and I you am. don't realize Two of them. it. Yeah, like you're not giving yourself credit. And, no, I'm not. You know, in fairness, David, I don't think, was giving himself credit. He t a lot of what he's saying is in hindsight. It is. Looking back. Mm -hmm. So. He's um, the man. He is the man. I, I trust everything he says. I don't care. Well, that's someone who's <laughs> trial by fire. I like, talk about someone Dude, who endures. And discipline, that guy is the most yeah. mentally tough guy I've ever not met, but seen and, yeah. and, and heard. Yeah. And, and oh my God. Yeah. There's this one thing that I, I, I can't do it personally, but the, but routine, the, the routine I can. I mean, I'm up at 5.30, I'm doing workouts, I'm eating, I'm drinking water, I'm doing my shit. But the one thing, uh, this is kind of just off, but you know how he runs like 100-mile marathons and whatever else? He never listens to music. 
And I was like, what? <laughs> I can't even think about working out until I, where's my headphones? Is my phone charged? Where's Spotify playlist? He's like, what happens? He's like, I don't listen to shit. It's like, what happens when the music runs out? The music isn't there anymore. What are you going to do? Yeah. Sit on your fat ass? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Okay, I'm like, God damn. Yeah. No shit. So the one thing he said, he's like, I listened to it, what did he say, 24 hours on repeat? One of the theme songs to Rocky. Yes. It's all instrumental. Yes. Over and over. It's like three minutes. Over and over and yeah. over and over again. Yeah. I'm like, damn. So that's yeah. a cool one. But he is the man. He definitely, I read his book. Um... You know, he's got two out now. I read uh, "Don't Hurt" or yeah, "Can't Hurt Me." Can't hurt me. Don't yeah, hurt me. So can't hurt me. Yeah, I recommend the audio book. Okay. Because the Is guy, it him? it's him. But <laughs> yes. the, there's a guy reading it. Okay, so okay. the guy reads the chapters, but then he and David are together and they talk about the chapter just read. And this guy is like, I think was it the editor? Mm. Like they're tight. Mm -hmm. So their conversations are deep and it just takes it to this new oh, level. Oh, like, um, cool. I loaned, I have the audio book and I loaned it to a friend. Maybe I could burn you a copy, but maybe I shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> when you get it back, let me know. I've read the book, but I'd love to hear that extra version. But I listen to his podcast. I'm, I'm constantly like, trying to get his workout. It's like, he's crazy, dude. Well, so, the other huge. thing that I thought was important is right about when I was thinking, shoot, I got to be stretching, and that's got to be a part of my regime. And right now, my regime's fucked. You're not crossfitting at 4.30? No, that came to an end, and now I go... No, yeah, let's right. just say it's off my game. Okay. I just today went back and working to get it back on cool. my game. We'll see. Whatever. Call me in two weeks ago. How's your game? And hopefully I'll be doing something. Yep. And if I say it's not, anyway. Um, stretching. Like David Goggins is stretching two hours, three hours a day, every Huge. day. Necessary. I, needed. Yeah. Have to. So, uh, I mean, I do very light stretching work, but... It's so important. Like even just the start of the day, like I don't have to do crank out a thousand push ups and do a bunch of crazy shit in the morning, but I'm like definitely getting my blood flowing in somehow, some way. A lot of calisthenics, um, jumping jacks, burpees, Cardio. squats. Yeah. yeah. So it's been Is it all in the home? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have never had a gym membership or nothing. When COVID first hit and that first crazy lockdown right, with the right. fires and shit. I was like, I am so cooped up in my house. I ran a hundred miles. I was like, I'm gonna make a thing for a hundred miles in a, in a month. He did it in two days. <laughs> Just, yeah. I almost killed myself in a whole month. Wow. Like six miles, five miles a day. It's crazy. Dude. Inside the house? No. Not outside with the smoke? In Petaluma, yeah. Wow. It's like just after that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's definitely keeping me sane. I'm not as consistent if, as if I could. But I'm trying to keep it up there. I eat really healthy. That helps. I play softball still. So that's fun. It's a big passion of mine. Um, and Mason just does whatever. So like he'll he'll ride his bike and I'll walk. I'm gonna break real quick and okay. I'm gonna shut the door. Yep. There. So we're back from a break. We were talking <sighs> Dave Goggins, I think. That's right. Yeah, yeah. the man. <laughs> the man stretching. Stretching. Here's the thing: is I know. heard someone say. Um, and I think it's true, like the health, just now that I'm in my 60s, mm -hmm. there's things that I realize, um, like the recovery, like I need, that's why I, I, I want to get back on my physical game because I'm feeling the effects of not being on it. I have, re yes, I agree you should. Whether it's just a walk down the street, man, yeah, anything. But the last couple years, I have purposefully like intense workouts for my mental state. Like when I'm doing it, I'm like, yeah, it's my body, whatever. But it's all up here that makes me feel better. I don't think about shit. Like that freeness and that like nothing else matters. I have no responsibilities. The world is my oyster. It does not matter when I'm like whatever I'm doing pumping or running or stretching even I'm just like there so it's more than just physical for me and that's what David Goggins taught me for sure and it's like yeah you can tr control your body but the hardest part is controlling your mind shut that shit off bro who are you like it's all up here it starts with here it ends up here 
in between it's it's like fuck so that's really cool to see how i feel mentally the next day during before it's like whoa it makes a massive difference i saw a study the other day i forget where the source was but people are saying prof like professional psychologists and psychiatrists and doctors that work consistent workouts for teens and whoever are dealing with depression that medication is doing less effectiveness to the brain with depression and anxiety and suicidal tendencies or whatever than working out is. So yeah. seeing a therapist once a week doesn't right. do dick. Right. Taking your whatever medication prescribed, consistent workouts and, and consistent exercise. It's healing. Yeah. That's Literally. what I like. Your son might benefit. You talked about swimming. Immensely. I can picture that guy being an Olympic swimmer. 100%. You know what's going to the military? Really? Mason has been in the military for about five years now, and he oh, wants to be a cop. Wow. So I'm like, I support it. It's cool. But anyways, yes, the consistent... He admires his uncle. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he does. He, Jack and him are tight. And when I say tight, it's like... <sighs> unbreakable bondage, bro. It's, it's crazy. So that's cool. Uh, I went through the academy, obviously, so he really inspires by that. Um, but yes, the swimming is crazy good for him mentally. It, you can just tell. It's a whole different person. I mean, he's tired and chill and rested. He goes home and actually watches TV for 20 minutes without <laughs> bouncing off walls. And if you don't, holy shit, prepare for chaos. <laughs> so if I'm not on it with him as well, like, hey, we got to go to park for 30 minutes before we go home. Hey, we got to go ride your bike before we start homework. Like, there's such a buildup of things to get him even on a level to stay focused on whatever it is. Does he like fun skateboarding? Or not. He thinks he does. We have a, he has a skateboard. He has a bike. He's got rollers, blades. He got scooters. Uh, he again with the ADHD and the spectrum stuff. He isn't coordinated. He's not. Everything he does is goofy but as hell. But in the pool, he's coordinated. Yes, yeah. to, to, to the point where he won't drown. But no, he, he's kind of like Nemo. He kind of does one of these, like really? a little half-assed one, and then a really good. And then, you know, he, he, he's very uncoordinated. Catching a ball. It's like this, you know, 8% of the time he misses it or bobbles it, hits him in the head. He's the most uncorded kid I've ever seen. But he tries everything. Uh, he does it really hard. He, what, he's the most positive, like affirming. He doesn't care where we are, who, who we're with, what we're eating, what sport, what activity, what movie, what anything we're doing, watching. It doesn't matter. I it's remember dope. way at the beginning, a couple of years ago, maybe three years, whatever, Robin saying to me, he just wants someone to be there. He just wants him. to hang out. Yeah, like all he needs is some. Like, don't be on your phone with nope. him. No, nope. no, be, be right here. With him. Doesn't matter who it is. Strangers, straight up, it's crazy. Everyone that I go sopple with the past seven years, everyone knows his name. He's con it's it's crazy, dude. Everywhere he goes, it doesn't matter who. If one pays attention to him, best friend instantly. So how does he do when you're doing softball? Great. Like he just hangs? Yeah. yeah, now he's definitely, um, like, obviously we're at parks where they have, like, playgrounds right. and different stuff to do. But he's like, all right, see, I'm going to go play the playground. I go over there, he's got five friends around him. There's dads and moms playing with him, pushing him on the swings. Like, yeah, buddy, work the system. So it doesn't matter. It really doesn't, which is really, it, it's cool to see um, that he's just willing to talk to anyone, try anything new. His food palate is expansive. It's, it's crazy. So it's fun to see. But it's, it's constant. It, it it never ends. It's 120 percent. Ten hours a day, twelve hours a day. It never it stops. And that's what the exhausting part is. I'm like, dude, ch ch take a breath, bro. I'm only 25. <laughs> take a breath, dude. How old are you? 25. Uh, 31. <laughs> I'm only 31. <laughs> Give your dad a break. Seriously, I've talked to my share of people, and I was like that too when I was a kid. I really like talking to people. I'm very outgoing and personable, and but he's on a whole other level. And people get annoyed by it, though. It, it isn't read body cues or body language or emotional, you know, uh, signs like okay, this kid's annoying me. He doesn't read those, so he pushes boundaries constantly. Did you see um, the movie? Gosh darn it! Now I'm forgetting everyone's name. Um, ben. Affleck, Stiller, Ben Affleck, um, where he plays an account, the accountant. No, I haven't. 
You would love it. Really? Okay. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen like the previews or whatever. It's really good. Okay. It, it's a, it's an action movie. Really? Yeah, it's an uh, action thriller. How does this pertain to anything that we were talking about? Because he's autistic. Really? And he has a father who's like, um, without giving too much away, he's um, about you're different mm -hmm. and you're going to get treated different and you need to be yourself because I won't always be here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to help you to learn to take care of yourself. Wow. I probably need to watch that. That's really good. Cool. That's I'm constantly really preaching those things. Like, dude, like, yes, he knows about it now in the past year. I'm really trying to use the words that, like, hey, like, yeah, your brain is different. Like, but, like, there's nothing wrong with you. Right. He has a superpower. And I know that. I just, you know, to put a label on it, you can't. But he's he's special for sure. I mean, he's intelligent as hell. He, again, he's happy as hell. But um, I love knowing that he is different and he will be treated differently so I'm trying to get him used to that and kind of prepare himself but there, you can't he has like trial by error you kind of got to get get treated differently and treated like shit and to like oh that's what I have to be aware of or that's why I have not just, I, I can't say that word around this person it's like there's yeah it's a lot well you can and there's a consequence to it right and being able to deal with the consequences that's the thing yeah yeah Full responsibility. To accountability. Yeah. It's a huge thing about my job right now, which I want to talk about a little bit, too. All right. Before uh, we go there, um, if you're game, the clever thing to say is, has your relationship or lack of relationship with your own father, mm. that's clever. But there's obviously truth to that. Mm. I don't know your relationship with your father. That's why it's clever, because I... It's, Alright. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> um, has your relationship with your father influenced who you are as a father for your son? Wow. Yes. Yeah. First gut reaction, absolutely. In what way? In a positive way. For my for for giving it to what my kid is now. Um he died three years ago. I got a call from my older sister saying our dad died. So that really sucked. Even though I did have a shitty relationship with him, and I didn't know where he was, or I haven't seen him for three years ago, like 12 years prior to that. I saw him down here in, in Center Fell, colostomy bag, still smoking, wheelchair, looked like shit. But I'm glad I saw him. But um, he was not there. Huge addict. Uh, substance abuse, alcohol, drugs. That's how my mom had met. Um, so, like, from the get-go, I'm like, yeah, I will not be like that guy. I mean, I have stepped up completely, and I still think about what he did and how I felt as a kid. And sometimes I feel like, well, when I get mad at Mason or react in a way where, you know, it's aggressive and I ground him or take things away or whatever the consequence is, I'm, I'm pretty hard on my kid, for sure. But at least I'm there. So I had to try to give myself some credit. I'm like, well, yes, I'm fucking here. Yeah, I just yelled at me. I will apologize. And we hugged 20 minutes after. And he forgets about it. Like, he forgot about it before I... You know what I mean? Like, he's like, why are you hugging me? <laughs> oh, yeah, that happened, right? <laughs> so so that's cool. Uh, I'm glad he does not hold grudges. He doesn't give a shit. He's like, it sucks for a minute. And he's like, whatever. I love you, guy. Um, yeah, my dad was a pile of shit. And I feel like as anyone can be a, a dad, a sperm, you know what I mean? But it, it takes balls and, and, and maturity to be an actual father and be present. And he wasn't. Um, so, yes, it, it, yes, influenced me for sure. Yeah. I just want to be better. I want to be there. I'm not ever going to give up. I'm never going to go to drugs and alcohol, especially the alcohol and drugs. Mom with the drugs thing, dad with the alcohol thing. Like, I am super against it. Um. So they've taught me things what not to do, but they didn't really teach me things to like how to be a man or how to be a parent. A, a, yeah, exactly. There was no like, hey, like, hey, son. I never had that from my parents. So just seeing what they did and what I knew that they were doing were was bad and what I didn't want to be like, they did it unknowingly. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, they didn't sit down and say, hey, drugs and alcohol are bad. 
so be a man. So saw their life fall apart. Yes. And you went, oh, nope. <laughs> Just don't do that. Right. Be there. Don't do substance abuse. That's what I'm I'm just running with that. So pretty stern on those things for sure. Are you in a process of healing in regards to your relationship with your mother and your father? Um, gosh. I still, when I think about it and like watch movies about dads that are dying or dads that are shitty or weren't there, or, like dad issues in a, in a movie or a book, I will still get emotional for sure. I tried therapy uh, for almost a year, thought it was a waste of my time. So I'm trying to make amends. I'm trying to heal from it, but it, it will still come up. There are rooted uh, wounds that may not never heal, but I've accepted it. I, I've moved on for sure from him. My mom is, is a different one for sure. There's still present, current events and things that are happening that are going to take a while for sure because she was there. She busted her ass for us and she never left. She never gave up. She just worked and worked and worked. She was never there emotionally but she was there physically for sure um but again same thing like okay i'm not gonna do that i created a job and a lifestyle for myself where i am nine to five where i can't have dinner every night and i can't have breakfast every night and i can't do things on the weekends and i can't do things in summertime so but yeah i mean I, i'm learning every day what it takes and boundaries is a good one so a couple years it's like don't come around me if you're this don't talk to me about this don't do this in my house, don't this in my car, not around my son, so I am very firm about the boundaries now, I'm finally sticking up for myself. Because um, it was always shut down, no one listened to me as a kid, growing up I had nobody to fucking cry to or hold on to or tell no and not feel bad about it, so I'm doing that pretty heavily right now in all my relationships. Um, because they fucked up so bad. Right, So thank right. you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... All right, so the nine to five that you created, yeah, is massive. What is it? My dream job. What is it? Love my life. <laughs> what <Okay>. is it? <laughs> no, um, all the bumper stickers have been every <laughs> single one, dude. I can go on and on. Um, it's still progressing because I want to take it further and further and further. But I am an educator for mental health and substance abuse rehab center for teen boys in Petaluma. It's an inpatient facility, so they're there for at least 30 days, maximum 120, ages 13 to 17, sometimes 18, but they usually turn 18 and go fuck this place. Some are solid enough to stay, but um, all walks of life, it's a combination of mental health. I mean, everything you can think of on the on the, on the on that spectrum. Uh, PTSD, depression, suicide and tendencies, anxiety, um, everything. Um, and then substance abuse as well. So mostly weed and alcohol, but there are some opiate, heroin, fentanyl, those kind of users, meth even. Well, let me ask you this, because it's rare that someone equates marijuana as a potential addictive substance that is abusively affecting one's life. It's true. But you've witnessed that I it have. is? I have. Yeah, I mean, their relationships, their school, their education, their will to be functioning teens in society, and a norm, you know, normally, uh, they're just fucking off. They just, the, the, it, it almost creates a mentality of fuck it. It's called the fuck it mentality, where they don't want to do anything that they're supposed to do, be doing to better their life or better their career or relationships with their parents or education and stuff like that. And it is. I, 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 I do agree that it is. So when someone comes to you and challenges that with, hey, this person's doing great in life. They're active, they're doing stuff, and they're high all the time. How do you respond to that? There are other ways. I, I, it's, I think it's circumstantial, for sure. Sic situational circumstances. With just weed, do you mean? Yeah. Like, do you think... I, instance, I know people I'm, kicking ass that are weed growers, weed smokers, right. weed sellers legally. They're kicking ass. Like Snoop seems to have a very nice career going on. See, chill, my buddy I went to high school with, he's rocking it. Millions of dollars. Millions. Legally. Right, right. I, I, I just can't be a part of it. No, but so for, would you say, do you think there's biology involved? Like this person could be high all the time and killing it. And if this person attempts it, it 
there's a different biology involved in they cannot do it yeah yeah I do I haven't studied it but I I almost guarantee that there is from your experience again circumstantial right so let's say they're in a home with crappy parents that are giving them weed at 14 years old it's like that's their mentality I can just sit at home and smoke weed all day this is amazing maybe they're program maybe they're almost like create their own biology I don't want to say that not biology but they create their own you know what I mean? Like, they're not born with that biology that they can smoke weed and, and, and success succeed. They almost, like, they almost create it for themselves. Right. You know what I wonder is, um, this is hypothetical, of course, but Snoop was on the streets at a young age. It's a very survival game. you got to be on your game. You do. So, as he's getting high, he isn't hanging out in the living room just watching TV, being no, he's sad. Hustling for sure, he's right? Hustling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's a part of it. Is it's true? Maybe it's a lot of like these spoon-fed kids again. It's like, oh, help, weed helps you with whatever cycle, or, you know, uh, problems, you know, uh, neurological problems that are going on. So their parents might think that's okay, but they're also spoon-fed, you know cars and money and cell phones and food and clothes like if you don't have to hustle why would you right he had to i had to it's like why would you change that so these kids are almost like baby they're softer for sure these kids are soft for sure (laughs) a thousand percent soft so Um, so they might not have to is autism a part of the um it is people there it is so you was your job part of what brought this potentially you considering maybe Mason is on the spectrum? Uh, a little before that, hearsay from doctors and stuff, but I've learned so much more and I've accepted it and like seen it because of the job, yes. It has really widened my uh, like potential to be a better dad and understand it more, to be more patient and understanding and these tools and ticks, tri- tricks and tips to to help soothe and self-regulate and, and, and self-motivate. And so it's really about a lot of light and just knowledge on what could be going on in his brain. So last time before this interaction we've had in the past this week, um, you were a car salesman. It was. Then that fell off. It did. How'd you move from that into... Bro, it was crazy. So... Again, I've jumped around so many different things. I went to college for a few years. I was teacher training uh, for Mill Valley School, or Tipperon School District. Did that for four years. Uh, we had an incident in the classroom where this we were hiking, a class that I was running a hiking group, and the girl fell on a hill. I wanted to be an EMT, did that education for a little while. That didn't work out. I was selling shoes at Nordstrom in between that. This guy came in, bought some shoes, like, hey, how about, I was telling him my story, he's like, hey, how about law enforcement? There's one in Santa Rosa. I was like, let's do it. <laughs> Why not? Fuck this place, Nordstrom Shoes. So I went to a six month law enforcement academy, federal park ranger stuff. Um, never actually got a job. Um, I got hired on by Washington State Parks to be a law enforcement officer. The day of my final interview, I had to drive up to Washington to meet the board of the people and stuff. That night, the night before I was going to leave, my sister called and said my dad died. So I drove up to Chico, almost to Washington. Or like I was driving to Washington, got to Chico, broke down, super emotional, turned around, <laughs> stayed in Marin. I was like, what am I doing? Why am I running away? So I, I, I missed my, my I thought was my dream job because my dad died. So I thought... And then I was selling cars. And I was like, I'm a good people person. Let's just have a safe, consistent, the schedule was nice, the money was nice. I was doing that for, gosh, a year and a half. COVID hit. They didn't take it seriously enough. They didn't pay me when they shut everything down. Like two months, they didn't pay me. And uh, they weren't even open. Um, so I was like, screw this. Started looking for remote jobs. Found a remote recruiting job. I was recruiting for like medical companies. Just talking to people, hey, you want a job? Cool, see you later. Did that for a little while. Then I got an HR job for a big staffing company. Did that for over a year. Hated it. Fucking bouncing around. Quit that job. I was like, what am I doing? Just I was just popping on Indeed. And I saw it. And I was like, what's this all about? I didn't even know what the facility was. I'm like, educator. 
like basically it was like eight to two the schedule like perfect applied they actually wanted me to be a different position and they didn't have any open positions like that that ad was bad but the person i was talking to interviewed with like we were crying together we were like hugging afterwards it was i was like whoa like i need to work here and i did not stop and i kept calling and he got me in contact with one of the other educators at the facility we interviewed we're the polar, polar opposite of each other like he is such a different person than i am but our work was the same so that was cool a week later i'm 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 teaching so, so you're teaching kids yeah. at this facility? Mm-hmm. You're yeah. a teacher. What are you teaching? Like general education to get through high school? Correct. It's just general ed. Most of the time, though, Greg, I'm not teaching them like things that I think they need to know. They're so like they're they're at, they're in rehab, but they're in high school still legally, unless they transfer or like graduated out or whatever. So they have these schedules of. Um, like online classes and, and their school has accepted that they're in rehab and they do online schooling and they and they send them cl- like they send them homework and whatever to, so they can get credits and graduate so realistically i'm just facilitating their zoom meetings making sure they're on their shit obviously i'm helping with geometry history if they need help but we have resources like duolingo which they help do spanish or russian or german or language they're speaking um but it's only from 9 to 12 so their class block during the rehab because they're there, they they eat, they sleep, they school, they ther- their therapies are there, everything's there. So there are class times from nine to twelve, but I'm there from like eight to three. So I'll set up. I'll they come in the class and everyone has a computer. I have eleven kids in my class, um, all diverse, all from different, you name it, drugs or mental health. And my class is like the privileged one. We have twenty eight kids total. The full census is twenty eight. So we have two classrooms. The main classroom is like 16 kids. I have like 11. And we just do what we can to keep them busy. We don't force them to do homework. We support them and encourage them to finish their homework. We're also building resumes. We're applying for jobs. We're getting their real estate licenses. They're creating businesses online to sell t-shirt design, logo, whatever. So many things. Not just do your ABCs, Johnny. Not at all. And I worked in a public school system, and it was like that. It was very black and white, and this is not. Kid, like, three kids just AWOLed on me a couple weeks ago. You never know what's going to happen, but it's really to keep them safe. Safety is number one. So keep when they safe. AWOLed, did you guys get them back? We did. And were, were there um, repercussions to their choice? There was. So there's privileged houses. We have South, North, East, and Hannon Ranch. So there's four different houses North is like the intake house where you have to stay there for a few days to acclimate and it's like where we do intakes. Or if you fuck up and there's consequences, like we'll send you to North. We gotta be with these kids that just come in here that don't know what the program yet. And there's South, we have a little more privilege, they have a TV and stuff. And there's East. And that's off the campus, like a half a mile down the road. And that one's way cool. Full kitchen, you have access to TVs and, and gyms and stuff like that. And there's Hannon Ranch, which is like five minutes up the road. And it's even more cool. It's like a mansion and like hot tub. Like it's legit. It's a really nice, f- fancy facility. So this isn't a public. No, thing. this it's is a private. private. Yeah, yep, privately owned. Two really cool guys that have created this about 15 years ago, 20 years ago. We just branched out. We have we have a, a, a girls facility as well for mental health and substance abuse. They're separate. In Petaluma as well. Correct. Okay. And we just branched open to Cloverdale. No, Clovis, excuse me, Clovis okay. by Yosemite, okay. and Riverside. We're opening two more. Do the, is there interaction between the girls and boys? No. None at all? None at all. No. Nope. Nothing. And do you don't create, like, um, field trip type things where they go out into the world? They do. They do We do. That. The more privileged boys do. They have, um, what do they call them, adventure days on Sundays, if they've earned it throughout the week. They get to go hiking or to a movie or to do their own laundry. We, we allow them to, it's a privilege to do your own laundry. So we, we allow that. Sometimes they'll go to like car washes and we'll do a big car wash thing. I'm not ever there. I only work Monday through Friday. But they do adventure days. But it's mostly like rock climbing or, or, or some kind of cool adventure on Sundays for sure. Yeah. But it's it, you're in there. You can't leave. 
So do you feel like you're in a career groove right now? Like I am. you just said, this is something yep. you want to build on? You yep. Wanna... A thousand percent, dude. There's clinical directors and therapists and recovery counselors that are there. And I have so much resources. I'm talking. I'm friends with them now. I just got my registered. Um, so I'm not like certified, but I'm registered. I took like some weekend class, paid 50 bucks for it. But I'm registered to be a recovery counselor now. So I can run... So we have like they have like small groups where they talk about like uh, accountability or um, their goals for the day, and I can I'm I'm allowed I'm legally allowed to run those groups now, which is cool. And then I'm gonna go back and get my recovery counselor cert, so I can actually be like have my own office, title recovery counselor, and help kids off drugs and help them through whatever impulse or addiction or whatever's going on. I might stop there for a little while. I want to get to recovery counselor and then a couple of years ride that out. Okay. Maybe even family therapy. And how were you able to go to the academy and still be a dad to Mason? Like, it sounds like that was... Um, it was six days a week. Uh, sometimes 10, 12 hour days. I was living with my mom by the time with my nephews, Brendan and Jackson. And my brother was down there and my sister. So we were all pretty communal. Okay. Everyone kind of came through. Um, so my mom and school. They went to school. Obviously, right, when, right. when I went up there, he was at school. But it was right. tough. So at that time, the family was tight enough yeah. where there was all the support needed yep. for him to... Yep. That was like the last uh, like really hardcore support I got for sure. Consistent enough where I can graduate. But there were days where I'm like, dude, like, what am I supposed to do? If I miss one day, I'm kicked out. If I fail one test, I'm kicked out. Like, it was really hardcore. So there was no messing around. So, like, on Sundays, on my day off, I would get laundry, food prep, hang out with Mason for a couple hours, sleep, rest, all that. So it was, it was nuts. It was no joke. Yeah, but I made it through. It was a good time. I have it on my resume. Never did anything about it. But it was the coolest experience I've ever been through. Well, it seems like that's good uh, groundwork for what you're doing right now. A lot of it pertains and applies to it yeah 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 i mean obviously crowd control reading signs too is huge and i don't think you can really teach that no offense but it's like you either have it or you don't you read people's cues like you seem chill you're nothing wrong right i mean but there's kids that i see at work i'm like oh, we need to get somebody something's going on you know what i mean like there's just signs that and yeah the academy did help like what to do if something I know how to de-escalate really well uh, that really helps with these kids that are already up here and we need to bring them down here this morning I walked into work and all the staff that like really they're called CC's and they hang out every day they make sure they get to their transitions and their safety and making their beds and stuff like that where they need to be they're kind of like babysitters not really but they're called care coordinators but this morning I walked in and, and, and one of the one of the clients wasn't getting out of bed I was like, can I talk to him? He's like, dude, everyone's already tried. Whatever, be my guest, teacher guy. <laughs> Everyone really respects me, but like, they're like, okay, whatever, sure. Yeah, you're not here full time. <laughs> exactly, right? So like, okay. But I walked in there, and he's in my class, actually, because so, I think he's like, oh, did, do you have this person in your class? I'm like, yeah, I do. He won't go to bed. I'm like, can I talk to him? Sure. Go in there. I sit with him for a minute. I'm like, dude, what's up? He's like, I just fucking hate this place. I don't want to talk to staff. I don't want to talk to this one other client. I'm like, you want to talk to me? He's like, yup. I'm like, what's going on? Talked him through it. Five minutes later, he's smiling, up, getting dressed, made his bed. I'm like, see ya. That was easy. So it's just like things like that where I'm like, yes, that's why I'm doing this. It's like, it's crazy. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's Very like you emotional. live in a miracle every day, it sounds like. Thank you. I want to be, I want to feel that for sure. Like every day, sometimes I'm like, fuck, I failed. Or like, fuck, I could have done something different. But I, I'm just a newbie. I'm just the, the the rookie. You know what I mean. So I'm learning a lot, and I'm going back to school in the fall. Uh, I get resources from the, the all the clinical staff. They're telling me stuff. It's fun. So you're gonna start school in the fall. I am. Where at? Super part time. Just uh, SRJC, the Santa Rosa Junior College. Online, part online, part, uh, hybrid. I guess you call it. Yeah. Because my schedule again, it right. has to fit into that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do that, um, get my hours up, get my certification, and, and hopefully they hire me internally so I don't have to create a whole new schedule and location. I want to work here. I want to work here. 
And then eventually, dude, I want to have my own, like, practice. I want to, like, I don't know, create a facility where they can come to my shit. Um, you know Chris Beanstag, the guy who did the money tree? Yeah. He's in that realm right now. Mm. And um, he works with some people who have a private practice. And um, part of it's, I think, interventions. But, you know, the whole... Like, not the dramatic intervention thing you see on TV. TV. It's like, yeah. But there's um, a very fine career can be created in that private. Yeah. And it's funny how the ones that I've chosen or think I was good at, except for the car salesman thing, because I was making a lot of money. <laughs> and I was good at it, which was really fun. But I haven't chose, like, I'm not like, I don't, like, money, yeah, it's cool. And I've struggled my whole life. Like, you would think I'd want to go to school to be a lawyer or a fucking doctor or some kind of... I just don't care anymore. This saving lives, at least I'm trying to, and maybe I do down the road. Maybe I'm influencing enough to like, okay, Mr. Mills impacted me. They call me Mr. Mills. That Yeah. Um, they imp He impacted me enough where I want to be good and I want to succeed. And I have gotten that feedback from the clients. So that's why I'm here. And it makes me feel so good every damn day. That's awesome. Really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So Stoked. bringing it back to Mason. <clears throat> Um, Who? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, obviously, you love him um, infinitely. He is your light. You are existing as For his him. father. Yeah. 20, yeah. Do you get that from him back to you? This is my dad. <sighs> I do. Yeah. I do. Sometimes overwhelmingly enough. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, he's a kid. He's 12, so he doesn't know how to, like, properly do it. Or appropriately do it, I guess. But it's constant I love you. It's constant hugs. It's constantly want to hang out and cuddle and do stuff together. And some days I'm like, no. I'm sorry, I love you. And I'll tell him that, like, fuck off. I love you, but eat a dick. <laughs> And how does he take that? Uh, he, sometimes he gets it. He's on the streets eating dicks. Yeah, totally fine. <laughs> he takes it literal, which he does a lot of things. No, I don't really say that. But I'm like, hey, buddy, like, I just need my space. And now we live in a, a smaller... I had a downsize, um, so we're really tight. Like, we're sleeping 20 feet, not, not even 5 feet away from each other. So he, he does get it. He's getting more independent. But, I mean, he shows it in his way, for sure. Yeah. There's things, like when he does things by himself that are expected because of my high standards and high expectations, when those kind of things happen, I'm like, damn, thank you. And he's like, for what? I'm like, just keep doing that. Do what you did, that, there. But he thinks it's just like normal, which, which is nice. But I mean, it's yeah, constant affirmations and you're doing great, dad. You're the, oh my God, 15 times a day, you're the best dad. What, do you, what, what does he say? something like like he has multiple dads it's like you're the best dad I've ever had or I'm like thank you how many do you have though I don't know what he means but it's just the way right. he says things it's hilarious so he'll right. say stuff like that all the time but some days I'm like is that just like a tick or like an impulse or it's like you don't really mean it but you think something's wrong maybe and you're like like we're just watching TV or eating dinner he's like you're the best dad in the world or like just really random times like sometimes inappropriate times where we're talking about race cars or, or, or the movie plot and he'll say something totally off the rocker. I'm like, okay, back to this now. So that's where the ADHD is like, where did you just go? Right. Pew, outer space, and then psh, right back in there. Well, here's what I'm Tripping. betting. I'm betting that he's always in outer space. Mm. Part of his personal discipline is learning how to have all this going on, and but oh, Dad can only handle one of these at a time. That's fair. Yeah, that's a good point. Some days are worse than others. Some days he's just gone, yeah. and I can't like I like yo like for real. Like the video games, it's so tough, Greg, because like. ADHD when you're folk I've learned that if you enjoy something with it, like he is severe ADHD he will stay he, uh, unhealthy amount of time on one thing and it's usually a video game not like a blowing up shoot him up bang bang but it's like a legit 12 year old video game like Mario Kart or whatever he's doing and it's like do I let him ride that out until he's done 
do I cut him off at 30 minutes and then he'll blow up because he wasn't done focusing and his brain's like nope I need to be here and he will he'll 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 freak out so I try to limit it I try you know, an hour yeah I, I think, could be wrong I could be I could be ruining him I could be I don't even know so well, it's like there is no right or wrong I, just, I can tell you from my experience I'm addicted to video games and I told you a couple of days ago like I deleted them because I realized I was playing mm-hmm. games they don't serve the big dream of life. No, of course not. You start it, and three hours later, your life hasn't moved no, anywhere. So, not at all. I know um, with my kids, as they were young, and I think with anyone, even as adults, I've heard the term safe porting. Mm. And, and in essence, it's giving fair warning for something that's about to happen. So usually I hear it in the sense of a triggering thing, like, mm. hey, Liam, are you cool if I say something that may be offensive or, you know, like I'm letting you know, here it comes You something. mentioned that, yeah, yeah, the other day. So I do give them like 10 minute warnings and then five minutes. A, are you finding that's enough? Sometimes, sometimes, yes. And if you're clear about it, that was the other thing I noticed with my kids. When I had a clear no, there wasn't any problem. It, it was when I was waffling inside, so my nose kind of like... Mm. Right. It's like they sense it. Mm. So, so yeah. if you're very kind of like, 20 minutes from now, we're done. Mm-hmm. 15 minutes from now, we're done. Okay, 10 minutes, you know. Like, and that's that consistent shit that I just forget sometimes. Yeah. I have so many other things, and it's like... And yes, I, I have been better about it, but no, I'm not consistent enough. Weekends, I'm like, whatever, dude. You've busted your ass all week. Well, You've earned this. Go ahead. That's cool. That do sounds it, like a good thing. Bad thing. Yeah. I think that's a good bad thing. So I am pretty strict about weekday stuff. Yeah. Summertime, whatever, man. Do, do what you got to do. Yeah. But like weekday school school days and stuff, I'm very strict. I'm very policed and we're, we're, we're working out. We're eating. We're watching together uh, like one or two episodes of a show, 30, 40 minutes or so, and then we're done. Um, but yes. you know what I'm wondering there's a show do you guys have Amazon Prime we do there's a show on there by this guy who grew up in Oakland called I'm a Virgo mm. and it is so wild it's it is unique like his storytelling manner is so unique nice. I wonder if your son okay is it appropriate for him uh, that's the thing I was just wondering there's it's some okay. I, sex in there I let him watch some some things I'm like whatever. Um, yeah, there's what like I was just talking with Jonah. It was one of the best sex scenes I've ever seen. Part of it is because it was so imaginative. Mm. Like it wasn't the stereotypical. Here comes the you know, yeah. Whatever. And you're not seeing anything physically, but there's you a, can tell what's going on. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. But it was a bad story to write that or something. But anyway, um, I am Vir- I am, I am I, a Virgo. I'm a Virgo. I'm a Virgo. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm a Virgo. Speaking of like astrological signs and stuff, his birthday is very unique as well. He's June twenty first, first day of Cancer, longest day of the year as a Cancer solstice. First day of the year, first first day of summer, longest day of the year. It's like he's already he already fucked up from the start. <laughs> There's a lot of fire going <laughs> a on. A lot of going on. So like I'm trying to get more into that too. It's like that has something to do with it. And I believe it. Every every full moon, about two days prior, I get this weird, sickly, emotional breakdown, depressive, reclusive state for about twenty four or thirty six hours. You do it personally. You, personally. About two days before a full moon. Hmm. Yeah, I'm starting to believe that more and more. I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm a double cancer too, so I'm like super ruled by the moon. So, anyways, you know they have chemotherapy for that. Do they? Really? Yeah, really for cancer. Huh. I imagine for double cancer. That's hilarious. Yeah, Thanks. double cancer, <laughs> no chemo, going strong. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Well, um, shit. There was oh. Has his mother recently made any communication moves of wanting to be a part of his life? Zero. Does he communicate? Three years. Any? No. 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 So he's at her parents right now. He is at her 
mom's and her new husband past like 10 years have been married but yes and i feel totally safe he went to idaho two years in a row now for a little while uh, and then they moved to montana so now he's in montana yeah and totally did good. she express with you like i want to be his grandmother yes or, like yes and you guys have communicated yes. and you're tight there's family there yes that's beautiful whether it's once a year or once every couple of years, it, it comes through. That's beautiful. I'm like, cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Helps me the fuck out. Yeah. If I'm not going to be there for a whole year, like, take him for a little while. So, it's coming in huge, for sure. It's a huge... It's good for him. This time, too, he flew by himself on a plane. Nice grab. Thank you. Oh, I let him go, too. <laughs> um, I didn't want to kill him. Um, by himself. First time on a plane, by himself. So, super brave and it's a huge independence thing like damn so that was a huge huge thing for us this year for sure so when he went to idaho you guys drove there we drove okay yeah ain't no thing has he called you in the past 48 hours you have no idea every 15 20 minutes really yeah and is it just hey dad you know what i'm going to the pool now yeah hey dad guess what I took a dump. <laughs> Drink some water. I got cotton candy. Nice, dude. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, pretty uh, much. Just random check-ins. I, so I bought him a watch specifically for this trip. I'm like, oh, dude, you're flying on a plane. You're going to be in Montana. Like, I want to be able to get a hold of you. So I bought him this, like, gizmo watch. It's like an Apple watch for kids. And I programmed three or four contacts, Robin, our cousin, me, and then his grandma in his phone where he can text or call those specific people, nothing else. Or they can call him and he can answer. And he can FaceTime, you know. Mm. <laughs> He's always like this. <laughs> like, who are, what? Um, so he loves checking in on me. He can like, there's a thing where you like, you push a button and it tells me because I have an app. It's like an app through my phone. I can tell him where he's at, his locations. Right, right. right. So he's like, check it in here, and then he'll call me, at, and then he'll text me the this, this same thing. So he'll check in. Okay, Dad knows I'm here now, and he'll text like some voice recording. Hey, I'm at the pool now. Okay, love you, bye. And then he'll call me. Hey, I'm at the pool now. I'm like, I got it. <laughs> so it's really cute. It's fun. It's excessive, but I don't answer every single time because I was just I, like, he's got to understand that. Boundaries, man. Just boundaries. It's like I'm at work. I'm sleeping. Or it's six o'clock in the morning, dude. Like, chill the fuck out. You're fine. You're safe. You're fed. You're healthy. Everything's fine. He just wants to be just checking in and constantly. And it's like, well, I wonder if it's a toy friend. There's an element oh, of a game. A hundred percent a toy. Yeah. A thousand percent a toy. And he's friend. using all that he can. I oh. can tell my dad here's a check-in. I can text him. It's a, game. It's, it's a game. Yeah. it's a game. And he's yeah. winning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, just like, you know, he loves to push buttons. And he does. Technology. So to him, it's just like, yeah, this is oh, what physically push does. buttons. Also emotionally push buttons. Well, I don't <laughs> think that's conscious. But no, it's not. It's not malicious either. Hey, have you taken him to a pinball thing? He's played. He's played arcade pinballs for sure. Absolutely, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Have you ever been to the pinball museum in uh, Alameda? No, I have not. If you want, that's my uh, sanctuary. Really? Yeah. So if you want to go with Mason, I'll go with you and. You pay a single fee and everything's on free play. Wow. And they have games from the old, like, nails oh, drilled yeah. in boards to the techno. Whoa. Con- yeah. Okay. It's badass. Nice. Cool. I could spend years. Hours. There. Years. <laughs> so would he, for <laughs> sure. He loves video games. Like I said, he's very, like, that is the number one thing that he focuses when he's there, when it's that time to do it. He's fully there. Can you do board games? No. Can't. Nope. Not there yet. He likes cards. Oh, really? We play a lot of like war. All right. Remember, it's like right, psh, yeah, war. Yeah, yeah. So loves that Uno is a huge one for him. So those two games we've been playing for years, but no, 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 the risk, concept, no, Monopoly, nope. Money and, and things end up all over. Yeah, right, dude. That's a fucking nightmare for me, dude. Yeah, right. Because um, it's frustrating. It's like, dude, like all you gotta do is move this piece two two spaces, just one two. It's never like that. I've, I've tried. <laughs> puzzles, same thing. Puzzles, not a chance. <laughs> not even remotely close. That's fine. Fuck them. We don't need puzzles and board games. Right, right. Connect 4, I think we've tried that. You know, that little, like, 
the the, the colors. Yeah, the, 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 you actually the, put pieces in. It's not really a game. It's like a board no, game, it's but a game. It's... we tried uh, Battleship one time. Oh my god! <laughs> Every time, like I knew I hit some of his battleships. He's like, miss. I look over. It's like <laughs> random ass pieces everywhere. I'm like, oh my god! I'm not playing this game with you. You can't. So it's more like, no. I mean, his, his brain can't car, car, uh, what's that word? Compartmentalize. Compartmentalize. Carpe diem. Yeah. Compartmentalize. The, <laughs> but he, 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 the, the function of the games. Where you, like, the real people who can do it are like 15 moves ahead. Or yeah, really. no, he can't. We tried, and his little buddy came over. We tried. Checkers, yeah. Uh, A little bit more. Backgammon? Probably not, dude. All right. Mangala, or Mangala? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like the the, 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 the two African rows of thing, yeah. the two rows of like little animals. Divots. Right, right. No. Well, the ones we the oh, thing animals. We oh, cool. No, there wasn't. It was like instead of stones, there were. You know, oh, little figurines. Yeah, oh, that's cute. Yeah. You got the ones with stones. He can do that. Yeah. But no, it's it's moving and and his video game skills though, dude. Like even since he was like nine or eight years old. Hopefully, I think way more advanced than I was for sure. Destroys, maybe that'll be insane. Like, there's people making millions of dollars with video. Uh, I know, like, I support it. I support it. Might ruin your brain. That's fine. Make some uh, money. Yeah. But he loves it, and he's very smart at it. I mean, he's doing things. I'm like, how did you even? What? <laughs> Mario Kart can't do that. <laughs> what is happening? I'm like, so stuff like that's really cool. It takes you apart. You just sit there in a little puddle. And like, oh man, that was fun. It's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So video games are huge, but again, I try to stay away because I it is unhealthy. Or one of the yeah. So it is what it is. Day by day. Sometimes they're more lenient. Sometimes I'm like, nope. We're going outside. We're sleeping. We're eating healthy. Every Friday is a cool thing we do. If you, especially during the school years, you bust your ass, no con, like you didn't get in trouble by the teachers or you didn't disrupt the class or everything goes pretty smooth. You listen at home, you do your homework, you do your chores. Friday, I let him choose a restaurant or a fast food or some pizza of his choosing. It's like our Friday treat. Nice. Sometimes it was a movie. Like, hey, screw, screw in and out. Let's go see the new Mario right. Brothers. Oh, it was so good too. So I let him choose like a like a treat. He loves incentives. Right on. That's a cool one. Right on. So Do, does reminding him there's an incentive come into play? Yes, every day. Okay. Every five times a day. I'm like, hey, remember, Friday. Friday treat, it will be gone. Sometimes I'm like, okay, you have a three strike rule where you do like the same things happen three times, like you don't get it Friday. And we've done that hundreds of times, he hasn't gotten it. He's also earned it a hundred, you know what I mean? So right, right, right. Some, day, some weeks are, are way harder. Some are a breeze. Life. Yeah. So it's up to him. Ball's in his, his court most weeks for sure. Is there anything that we haven't touched upon that you'd like to bring up? Uh, thousands. All right, bring one up. No, um, no th th those were the big ones. Uh, my job and being a single parent. Full-time, full custody, single dad. Trying to find resources and different people that can relate to you is the hardest part. My social life, zero. You find that's challenging for yourself? Yeah. Especially on times right now where I don't have my kid for two weeks, I don't know what to do with myself. I have no social life. I, I wanted to be here. It's not like, don't take that no, the wrong right, way. Right. But like, I just have, I can no one to hang out with. I, I, I don't go drink. It's like, I got nothing. So I work my ass off. I'm exercising. I'm, I'm doing this, which I really wanted to do. Uh, but I feel like other people wouldn't do, you know what I mean? So social life can be hard for sure. Yeah, people go home and or party or go hang out with friends and have dinners. And I'm invited to those things sometimes, but I'm like, nope, sorry. I gotta go pick up my kid. Right. I gotta go shop, clean, cook, wake up, do laundry, pack, bath time, whatever. Right. There's no, there's no time for it. Yeah, that does remind me of when Robin was a junior, the uh, prom, was a fiasco. It was really an emotional bad thing for her. And her friend said, we didn't know you wanted to go. Every time we ask you, you say no, no, yeah. no. So her senior year, she consciously, and she had two friends who really dug in and helped, like was like, okay, I'm gonna have a senior year. Yeah. So good. I imagine for yourself, like after the 30th time, I was like, oh, Liam's busy. 
Bit they probably like, stop. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it, it's a great point, because now it's gotten to the point where they invite me. It just con I, subconsciously, I'm just like, even though I probably could, I just say no. I don't even I like I not even want to anymore. I just gotten I've gotten so used to it and so jaded that I can't that I think I can't even when I probably could. Right. Well it sounds like you've got your boundaries, you know. There's yeah. this element of like if I deviate even a bit, potentially that erodes the whole thing. So right. I'm gonna stay on this track it's that's true. working right now. It's true. And I don't really have the biggest interest anymore. Like going to dinner with you or doing this, like it sounds more of my alley. I just got today too. Like, how old are you? Are you forty something? I'm like, do I look forty? She's, she's like, no, but you hold yourself and compose yourself so maturely. I thought you were way beyond of what you are. I'm only thirty years old. I was like, wow, oh, thank you. That was cool to hear. That's cool. And I think having a having a kid and forcing myself not to do those things and stepping up and partying and fucking up and not doing those things. I mean has really matured me for sure. I mean, again, I didn't party uh, through my 20s. I didn't have a 20s. I went to school, I worked, I took care of my son. Went home, cooked clean. Like, it's been going on for 13 years, almost. 12 years. 12 years. He just turned 12? He just turned 12. All right. Hey, I jumped the gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get him out of the house. He just turned 21. You're on your own. Yep. But six years, I'll be 38 when he's 18. 38. So hopefully we can just transition that and smooth military, college, whatever he decides, just like get out of the house, please. And go live, go live your 20s, go go travel, go make money, go hang out with women or boys, whatever. Whatever it is you like. It'll be women, guaranteed. Yeah. Never know. So thank you for this. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, brother. Love you. Love you too, man. Thank you. Appreciate it.